Good evening. It is 530 um, on November 9th, 2021. So we're going to kick off the act committee meeting um, with myself, Nick Allen, uh, Mike Stefano and Lisa Dorsey. Department heads are Mike Brown and Bill Mann. Um, number two is comments, suggestions, petitions by residents and attendants regarding items not on the agenda. Okay, <laughs> got a full house today. Um, number three is to discuss amendments to the home rule charter, um, which is something that we've been talking about for a few months now. Um, Sean, is it cool if I like just run down the stuff we got from the solicitor? Yeah, um, I, after our meeting, I sent her a memo on October 13 and she got back to me pretty quick and said, you know, I want to answer these. I want to answer the fundamental questions of whether we can do it in legal research. So that's why you have a memo that talks about what you can do instead of an ordinance this evening, because that's what she had time for. So um, just to touch base on some of the questions we had asked before, um, it's a general rule that the person who is appointed interim does not run for mayor the following term. Um, that is not something that we can make law. Uh, we learned that. Um, we also learned that if a, a resident has a open legal action against the borough, um, they cannot be prohibited from being a candidate. It's a question that was asked last month. Um, can the borough change the process for filling a vacancy? Yes, we can. I would recommend that we do. Well, not really that we do, but um, can the borough prohibit a, an official from holding two elected offices at any level of government at the same time. We are allowed to uh, make that happen. And I think that was it for what we got back from the solicitor. So moral of the story there is yes, we are allowed to prohibit um, someone from holding two offices at once. So we're clear on that, um, which kind of leads me into this whole situation here, which is up on the screen. Um, this is my um, proposal for how we would handle this and what I'd like to, like in an ideal world, we could just send this to the solicitors this month and they can figure out how to put this into words. Um, I just think the picture makes a lot of sense. So I took, if you go to the next slide, um, there's four year, and I'm, this is not specific to the mayor. This is for any elected official in the borough. So this is like a, a roadmap of a four year term, which is standard for council and the mayor. Um, so I've kind of split it into four years. And then the important dates I've kind of roadmapped along the way are the beginning of petition circulation, the primary election and the general election in all four years. Um, it's not to scale, sorry. The petition circulation in year four looks like it's in like March and it should be like second week in February. Uh, but anyway, next slide. What, so basically what's gonna happen is there's that arrow that's called resignation. And this is just indicating on every point of a four year term, if an, if an official were to resign or step down, what would happen? Um, so, if for whatever reason someone is out of office in the first few weeks of their four year term, council would appoint an interim that would serve up until the next general election and candidates um, for any party could circulate their petitions regularly. And then there would be a special primary election and each party would um, select a candidate through the regular primary process and then there would be a special general election. And that, so basically what happens is we just get to run a regular election under the regular election calendar. Um, so, yes.
So that is, um, it, as we like go through, I think that'll make more sense because I'm, what I'm trying to do is just attach our code to the election calendar. And that way we don't have to worry about any of that. So like, if you go to the next slide, I think this answers your question. Um, if there was a resignation after petition circulation were to begin, which is like a two week period, I think, um, the interim would serve, this would be, and this is my biggest like drawback to this idea is how long this interim would be in place. But what this does is it gives, um, basically at the next petition circulation, you would start that regular um, election process where candidates would be circulating petitions um, for a term that would be just over two years long. They would run in a primary like normal, then they would run in a general election, and then they would complete the term for that two and a couple months, two years and a couple months. And then as you like just go through the next couple slides, you're gonna notice that not, nothing really changes um, other than the, the amount of time the interim would be appointed is getting smaller just because time is passing. Now you can go again, same thing, same thing. So this would be like January of year two of their term. So, and then, so, uh, so I'm confused. If you could go, could you go back to that? The, the, the one that shows the special election taking place, like the second year. Go back one more, I think. Yeah. So. I, I would feel uh, actually go back one more. I'm sorry. Go back one more. You couldn't hold a special election at the general election on that first year. For the new mayor. Yeah, you definitely could. And um, the problem with that is if you just have a special election and there's no primary, you could get like eight people running for, like the democratic process would be super weird and confusing. You'd have like a ton of people that would just like jump in, like the party structure would be all weird. And then that person would be in for like three years. Doesn't, but doesn't in the special election, the party choose a candidate to put up because they're not technically voted in in a primary because you're past it or I, i'm confused i could be wrong i feel like that happened with me yeah. i was uh, i was appointed and then the democratic party like signed off on me being on the ballot in the general election so when that happened here then that person would not go to the next second year they were just whoever the new could be the same person obviously but yeah. no and i think i think that's right i think that's right um my my whole purpose for kind of putting it this way is to avoid like just the political party choosing someone who's going to be mayor for like three years. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like I feel like that as much as we can get like just a regular election where the residents are giving their input is what I'm trying to. Uh, I'm sorry. So this is what you're proposing. OK, yeah. I thought this was a slide showing us what way it would work now. OK, yeah. now I understand. OK. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Um, and I don't really need to say much as we kind of move along because the same thing's happening. Where as soon as you get into the petition circulation window, that interim end date just moves back a year so that it allows for the petition circulation primary and a regular general. And then this is the last couple slides. If you go one more or keep going. Just tried to make this look really clear. That's why there's so many slides. <laughs> Keep going. This is where things get a little different. Um, because in year four, the petition circulation is already going to happen regardless because the term is over. So in my mind, if someone resigned in the middle of year three, you would you wouldn't really need to have like a special election per se. You would just do the regular election with the petitions, do a primary, do a general. Um, and this is something we could talk about where the person who wins would just immediately become mayor. So in the case of um, uh, Mayor elect Eve Baptiste, I can now say, um, if this proposal were happening right now, it would be Mayor Eve Baptiste now because in my mind, we have someone appointed by council and we have someone who's elected by the people 
and I'd rather have the person that's elected by the people instead of the person we just pick. I feel like at this point in the term, you could just let that interim, you could let the interim, you could essentially do it the way it is now, where if it's that late in year three, you elect somebody then in the next year to just finish out that last year of the term instead of having the interim complete it all the way until the end. Um, just because it's so late in the term already that, yes, you would have somebody uh, appointed and you'd rather have somebody elected, but I feel like you'd have the special election anyway. And if it was somebody who was elected, you know, non-democratically, essentially because they were just appointed by the party, that it would only be for a short amount of time. So I understand in the beginning of the term, that's a concern. Maybe it's not as much of a concern in the end. I don't know. We're splitting hairs here, but I feel like. And a, another concern I would have with that is still what I said before about like the party picking whatever. Like I'd like to avoid that as much as possible. But um, we're still going to have to pick an interim regardless. So you would pick an interim and they'd be interim for a little bit. Then you'd have a special election and then potentially someone else could be the mayor. And then you would have a whole nother election happening at the same time. And there's just like a lot going on. And then, but if we did it this way, someone would resign, we'd pick an interim, there would just be a regular election and we'd be good. Just trying to make it like clean. Oh, while you're fixing that, I I'm feel good. like that's kind I'm of good. what I was saying, though, Nick. I, I think that's exactly the point I was trying to make yeah. at this point in the term. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's, um, so the point with that is you would have, you would have our interim mayor for, let's say, like five months, and then you would have, you're right, somebody elected by the people from that November for a year, um, or a year and two months, deciding what we end up doing. Um, but the issue I have with that again is you're just going to get whoever's on the you know party committees are going to pick the candidates that are running in the general. So my priority for this was let's have a, every time we elect someone as on council or as mayor as a community, let's have a primary and let's have like let's run through the full process. And um, and I, I agree that there is, I, I think the biggest negative is the fact that at times the interim position would be relatively extended compared to what we do now. So I think the debate that we would have is what's more important to us, a shorter council interim selection or a regular primary and general election as we pick someone to fill the rest of the term. And in my mind, it makes sense. Obviously, I'm proposing this. So in my mind, this makes sense. And that's just because the rules are always the same every year. And every time somebody gets elected, they've gone through a primary, an open primary, and a regular general. So normally the petition circulation starts in, was it like second week of February-ish? Just ran. <laughs> it's like October, November now, so do you remember? Um, so that's, yeah, that's the, I used to think about this all the time. I don't remember how long it lasts though, it starts I don't know if it's only a few weeks. It's not very long, right? Weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah.
I, so when, when the resignation happens after petition circulation, that's when it gets like the interim gets extended pretty far. Um, so I think just for the solicitor, they would just have to refer to the election calendar and then whatever that is in the election calendar is what it'll be in terms of timing. This is a good Bill Scott question, actually. Because, see, I remember he handed me one of these calendars. Andy Dinneman did, too. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Like, there's the, it's like that little pamphlet yeah, thing. It's like a little little booklet of some sort. Yeah, I don't um, know who puts that out. Maybe Chester County Voter Services puts that out. And um, Bill, I just sent you the election calendar that I was referring to. It's like, it's issued by the county every year. I don't know if you wanna, I mean, we got time, right? This is the only agenda item, so. I think what Mr. Prome was saying though makes sense in terms of getting like the general consensus of council before we really pursue this in any way. Yeah, so whatever that first date is. So this year it was February 16th. So if they were to resign on the 17th, that would that would be that barrier. Probably. I, I don't know. I should know, but I don't. But yeah, I'm sure we could do it that way too. If that's easier. Um, how do we feel about recommending that idea as is the council. I, I think, I, yeah, I'd like to to see what everybody else on council thinks. I, I don't, I think it's a good idea. I think what really would make me nervous, like you said, is if it happened really early in a term, then we end up being the ones to kind of decide the mayor for the rest of, a, of you know, three years like that. I'm not as concerned at the end of a term, but yeah. this could really, you know, this could be helpful to have in place in case there wasn't a, a reason for that, so. So, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, yeah, I think the 1 thing you said is. Um, with the appointment, I think the longest we could do the math. The longest appointment would be like, in this case, if it was this year. We would appoint an interim on February. 17th, let's say, and then that they, they would serve. Um, until November of the following year, so that would be the longest interim possible. Which I understand is. You know, a decent amount of time, <laughs> but you're trading that off. You have the people to democratically go through a primary process. I understand that. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I think I'd like to bring it up and see what council thinks as a whole. Do we want to use the terminology to recommend 3 out or we just want to stop the council. Sure, we'll call it. Do you want to officially recommend it 3 out? Cool. Three hour recommendation. 
uh, what is next? Minutes? Look good to me. Uh, I was not, um, I was not in attendance, so okay. I understand. Cool. Any other business? And yeah, I'm not by any means in a rush at all on this stuff at all. So, and I keep hearing there are more important things to fix in the home rule charter than this. And if that's true, let's do it. <laughs> Let me know. Like, I'm happy to do that too. But I just was made aware of this issue and I'm trying to fix it. So. Could do like free free ice cream everywhere in the borough for past borough managers, something like that. Could be yeah, it could be good. <laughs> uh, any other business other than that? Maybe we can hit that next month. We'll adjourn at five fifty-two.